Jimmy Butler leads the Celtics to another win versus the Celtics. Game 1 W, the Heat are 3 games away from the finals, and the Celtics had a lot of problems, but I'll talk about that later. And the Denver Nuggets survive a heroic comeback by the Lakers to win Game 1 behind Jokic's 34, Jamal Murray at 29. Let's talk about that first. All right, the Nuggets won the Lakers ye- yesterday, uh, two days ago. I didn't make a video of that because I made a video of a draft lottery instead. Uh, you can check that out. It's just a few videos below my channel. It is Victor when Miyama is a spur, basically has a Spurs thing. But it's weird because I got that picture right after the lottery was already there. So I don't think they can Photoshop that. Like. Suspicious, but we don't t- we don't talk about that right now. Talk about the Nuggets winning the Lakers in Game One. Now the Nuggets were really good in the first two, three quarters. They were winning by twenty one, and in the fourth, they almost collapsed. But Jokic did really well. He had like a triple double in the third quarter. He went crazy. I think he had a. 30, 20, 35, 20, 34, 20, and then like 10, or something like that. Went crazy. Jamal Murray also went off. Kentavious Caldwell, Paul, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, Bruce Brown all contributed too. It was a really big team effort. A lot of players scored a lot. Played good defense. Uh, Lakers did really well. Austin Reeves did well, but... They were too late to change, so they went Rui Hachimura guarding eight, uh, Jokic, which stopped them a lot because it is, although Rui is a much worse defender than AD, he can like still be Tisa Jokic, and Jokic likes to go to the paint a lot, so he posts up Rui like every time, but then once he gets to the paint, AD is there for backup, which is much better because AD like can't really guard Jokic one-on-one. He is much better as a help defender than a defender one on one because no one can guard Jokic one on one. So they need at least like two people guarding him. So AD was like basically the second person guarding him. And he did well. But at the end of the game, they were down three only with like two minutes left, something like that. But they went cold and also LeBron missed it with three. And LeBron turned it over at the end, which basically sealed the win for the Nuggets. The Nuggets did well, but the Lakers also did well. So the Nuggets still has to be a little worried about this, that they almost choked this game. And game two, they have to adjust somehow. I believe the Lakers will probably keep Rui Hachimura on Jokic. But let's see what the Nuggets do to counteract that. All right, let's talk about the Heat versus Celtics. The Celtics lose in a game that they were winning by nine at halftime. And they completely just did not do good on the third quarter. The Heat scored 46 points in the third quarter. And they took a 12-point lead, 21-point uh, twenty one point turnaround as the Heat were winning by 12. And at the clutch, Jimmy Butler made a crazy mid-range shot. Most of them off balance. And then he made that get. Game dagger three, which bounce lucky bounce from the rim. Jimmy Butler scored like thirty five or thirty seven. I forgot, but he did really well, and the others did well too. I believe Caleb Martin, Kyle Lowry, Max Juice, they all dropped fifteen. Bam dropping twenty something with good defense, and overall, Jason Tatum only shot four times in the fourth. I mean, in third and fourth, and zero times in the fourth. Turned it over many times, two traveling calls, and also a few just, like, bad passes, which they got stolen, and that was a bad showing by Tatum. Tatum was good at the beginning, but he just didn't show out in the fourth quarter. Jalen Brown was decent. Al Horford, Marcus Smart had 10 assists in the first half, but they couldn't stop the Heat, and especially Jimmy Butler. Also, Coach Spo 
a great coach with his adjustments, which led to the Celtics to lose. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching. We're out.